What's happening guys, King GBL here, and welcome back to a brand new Go Belt League video. Today I'm going to be showcasing a very fun and strong team in the Open Great League. It's more of a meta team, more of a strong team. As you can see, I'm getting my dodgy charger connection message up on screen as I'm trying to shuttle claw through this uh, Frost Lass. So I think it ended up making this matchup weird. I think whenever that came up, um, I actually lost a few shadow claws, so never the greatest thing when you're against Frost Lass. This thing hits like an absolute truck, and uh, we do end up seeing being the opponent here in the next move. They go for Avalanche, we do just about live it, and the opponent can either fight for alignment, or of course they can come in, get a farm down. I'm always a big fan of alignment, and in comes Obstagoon in this first match. Uh, Azumarill's gonna have an absolute feast here, and in comes Jellicent. Complete RPS for the win, and that gives us a good chance to have a little chat about the team. But before we do so, welcome on into the video. Hope you're all having a great day so far. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. We are doing very, very well with these videos this month, uh, since the start of the new season. And I think today's question is going to be, what are you thinking about the new season? Do you think this meta is looking better, worse? Uh, just let me know in the, in the comment section down below your general thoughts and opinions about the season schedule and the uh, move updates and the meta and how it's shaking up. But anyway guys, the team is Sableye, Registeel and Azumarill. Very, very strong team in this meta. Sableye, even though it doesn't have as many meta champs to hunt for, you will see a lot of Defense Deoxys. And generally speaking, it's a very neutral Pokemon to have in the lead. Um, you're not really seeing an absolute ton of dark leads in this meta. And also, I don't think I've seen a single Lickitung lead this season. So Sableye lead's looking quite strong. It's very neutral, and like I said, you can put a lot of pressure on a, a lot of different teams. Azumarill, newly buffed with Bubble. I think it's a fantastic pick this season, guys. I've always been a big fan of Azu. Um, in fact, I only built it, I think, two seasons ago, or the season before last, in fact. Uh, really, really strong Pokemon. I think even before the buff, Azu was pretty underrated, but especially with the uh, buff Bubble, it's bubbling through those Talon Flames. It's uh, hitting a lot of things like the Mud Boys, and it's just a very neutral and strong Pokemon. Registeel is a Pokemon that I think I've not really seen showcase too much, but it's just an amazing Pokemon in this meta. Um, you're able to win the zeros against Talonflame. You absolutely shit all over Skarmory. Metacham usage is at an all-time low. If you do come into Deoxys's, it's not that bad. Um, even against Mud Boys, uh, even like Quagsire, you're able to get off probably two moves. Uh, more often than not, you're forcing a shield with it, which is kind of insane. The only Mud Boys you really care about are the Earthquake users. I did see actually a Quag with Earthquake. I ended up shielding the Earthquake and getting off two moves. Um, anyway, so generally speaking, the Mud Boys with Mud Bomb, you can get off at least one or two moves on them. And as mentioned, with the lack of uh, Metachams, you're kind of chilling. Even if you do see Metacham, it's probably in Dynamic Punch, so you don't really win the zeros anymore. Um, if you do happen to see them on the pop, I think you can win the zeros if you're up. I want to I say like four or five lock-ons if the opponent gets a little bit greedy, tries to overfarm before they swap out. You can get off two Zap Cannons, and against Polyrath, uh, you win the zeros against that as well. So Registeel looking very, very good. And the good thing about Registeel is you're going to draw out any potential Metachams um, that may be in the back for Sableye to take care of. And overall, I went very positive with this team. This video includes a 5-0, a 4-1. I did have a couple of bad sets where I unfortunately had a little bit of bad RPS. You're seeing in this next matchup right here, we've got a Victory Bell lead. As you can see, we're kind of EBA weak to Victory Bell. It's not EBA in the sense where, like, you know, Sableye's super weak to Victory Bell. But all I have to do is shield once and farm it down. So in this matchup, you just stay in, take the shield advantage and come into Reggie. The opponent Insta Frozen Acid Spray, which is a bit silly to be honest with you. Um, I'm not too sure what they're up to here. And I think the opponent actually goes for a swap out into Carbink. I decide to store all of my energy. Since they're safe swapping Carbink, it makes me think it's Bink and Basti. So what I want to do in this matchup here is even shield once, like shield up a Moonblast. The opponent's already invested a shield. I don't think they're going to go for a bait here uh, with Carbink versus Azzy, right? No attack debuffs or anything like that. This opponent's using a 14, is it 1437 CP uh, Carbink? We're going to get off a couple of player offs, and the plan here is to bubble it the whole way down and allow us to go for an Ice Beam on the um, on the uh, Victor Bell if it comes back in. In fact, I think the opponent's going to go for an Aggro Swap, we're going to go straight for the move. If they uh, shield this, that's perfectly fine. What are they going to do against Reggie? Not a whole lot. We're going to swap straight out, lock on down the Carbink, and in comes... It's an ABA Grass team with a Roserade in the back. And you know, I've got to respect the Roserade, but I'm not respecting any team that's using Carbink and Victor Bell. Um, I'm not going to call this a, oh, this is an interesting team. No, fuck that. This seems trash. Um, we actually get two attack debuffs on this. And for those of you who do enjoy Roserade, like myself, uh, this Pokemon is quite interesting. I let that first Firewall Ball go, and the second one, because I want to try and force the opponent to go for the Bullet Seed down, which is not going to be possible. Um, but yeah, I think those attack debuffs were pretty vital, as you can see. We're quite low health, and we do manage to take care of it. Good games. Um, in this next game, I make a slight misplay. We'll have a look here. So I'm going to go straight for foul play. You don't need to go for a return on this thing. Um, I believe it takes them seven counters to get to the to lunge, but I think it's actually seven six if I'm not mistaken. So what I end up doing in this match here is getting off the first one. As you can see, the shadow balls are our shadow claws are really adding up. The shadow claws are hitting like shadow balls, and I over farm too much and end up CMPing the opponent. 
So I'm like, oh, this is annoying, but they, oh, they end up going for superpower. I think that's what it was. Um, I come in to go for lock on down. I go in with uh, Reggie to lock on down the thing, thinking like, they have a buzzwell in the lead. It's a counter user. It's probably their best answer to Reggie. We get the debuff on the car pink, and we can only guess what was in the back. It's going to be either Victor Bell or some other rubbish. But in this game, I've sped this up to four times. This is about the most RPS game that you can possibly imagine. We have a Wigglytuff on our Sableye. We have a Tentacruel on our Azumarill. It's using Acid Spray. Um, and what I was hoping to do in this match was kind of like whittle it down a little bit, farm it the whole way down, maybe get off a return on the Wigglytuff, and maybe hope like it's, you know, charm double poison or something like that, but we're getting so low that we can't even go for anything, which is kind of annoying. I go for the swap, the opponent comes into Metacham, and of course you know it's going to be in Power Punch, so we just top left. We go 4-1 on that first set, and uh, into the next match against Victory Bell. Again, not a very positive lead, but you're guaranteeing uh, like winning the zeros basically, and getting a shield advantage. So in this situation, you know, it's not ideal, but generally speaking, these teams do have Basti in the back, so we're just hoping that Reggie up a shield um, can deal with Basti and Medi. Um, of course, Reggie and Azu can deal with them too. There seems to be a team going around at the minute where it's got uh, Victory Bell and Carbing in the back. They come into Mandibuzz of all things, which is uh, not a very good answer to Reggie. The opponent's clearly core broken by Reggie. I should have got a little bit greedier there in that matchup. I could have overfarmed a lot more. In fact, I should have even went for another Zap Cannon on the, on the Mandy. This thing's an Air Slash, which of course is still a positive matchup for Azu, but it's a little bit less comfortable, so I 100% should have went for a Zap Cannon, and even left with energy, just got super greedy in there, and just came out with a bunch of energy, but I realised that if the opponent's coming in Mandibuzz versus Reggie, they clearly do not have a good answer to it, and I'm also thinking, we're, we're up to shields here, right? Um, what I want to do is just overfarm an absolute ton before throwing each move, so that whenever the Victory Bell comes back, we can go straight for the Ice Beam, and essentially force the opponent to come into their final Pokemon. So yeah, I'm, I'm tapping in the bottom right, expecting the Victory Bell. We're two bubbles away, and it's actually a Basti Dome. We go for the Hard Swap, and basically looking to draw back at the Victory Bell, because we don't want the Victory Bell doing some awkward stuff on our Azu, and we're just hoping and praying, my Reggie is super, super thick. Can we get to the move? We just about do get to the move. The stupid team's getting absolutely clapped. Boom, in goes the, uh, the Focus Blast. And that right there is exactly why I should have been a little bit greedier in the beginning. Um, you know, I, I predicted it was Basti, so I should have left myself with a little bit more energy. Air Slashes were doing absolutely nothing to me, and of course, uh, Razor Leafs do a lot more, right? So, I think I should have been a, a little bit greedier in that matchup. We do get a Reggie lead, and the opponent swaps straight out. The opponent does not have to swap straight out a lot, especially whenever we've got a Sableye that can force a shield off the Dragonar. I always force the shield on the Dragonar safe swap, uh, even though I have an Azu, because, I mean, why not, right? Dragonar versus Azu is actually not quite as dominant as you would think it would be. You can't exactly bubble it down, and the opponent can get off multiple body slams. And it might be this match or one of the following matches, but you're going to see the opponent starting to shield here and looking to try and take switch advantage. So that's another good reason to grab a shield in the front end. And uh, yeah, back in comes the Registeel. Now, I sort of do want to hold on to my Azu just in case there is something in the back, but I'm just kind of hoping that if there is something in the back, you know, my two Pokemon can deal with it. The opponent goes for quite an annoying play. They go for the Focus Blast and farm down. It's tempting to swap out, but like I still have the shield advantage. I end up going for the Ice Beam here. It is 665 for the Player Off. So Player Off would have done a little bit more damage, but as far as I'm concerned, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. I'm gonna have to throw the move anyway. We come in with our Reggie and in comes his Wireless. This should be basically game over. I'm gonna go straight for it. No point mucking around here. <laughs> There's no point missing about. Uh, we'll go straight for the move. Yeah, that's GG's basically. They put on top left. And like I said, Registeel in particular, I feel like in this team, was just picking up so many good backlines. All of these stupid carbings, all of these Bastidons. I'm up to about rank 17, I believe. I'm facing off against a lot of legend players and a lot of sweats basically at this point. And a lot of these players are using very degenerate Pokemon like Victor Bell. Carbing, Bastiodon, so like Registeel is just having an absolute feast. Now in this matchup, the opponent built all the way up to 8, so I'm like, yeah bro, nice Earthquake. I'm gonna shield up 1, and basically <laughs> force the shield off the opponent. I feel like with Altaria, if I can get shields down with Sableye, I can look to go for a return, or look to go for like an Ice Beam with Azu. Whereas if they have 2 shields, they can sort of shield for my Pokemon a little bit, so I wanted to get shields down. The opponent free after 4 here, uh, this can only be a Mud Bomber and Aquatail. We do live in Aquatail. And back in comes Altaria, now we've got 1-1 to -one shields, the opponent's getting quite low, I think that they're going to YOLO the Moonblast, it's actually the Dazzling Gleam, um, which is not of course an Elite Charge TM. We farm up to the uh, Ice Beam, just getting it off straight away, I don't even want to eat a Sky Attack on here if not necessary. And in comes with Daddy Cash, this is quite interesting here, this is a positive matchup for Azu. But with Sadie Cash is quite fake, and we do actually, I believe, have a foul play banked. So I think I'm going to make uh, an interesting play in this matchup. The opponent still has a low health Pokemon in the back, a low health Quagsire. 
So what I'm expecting is the opponent to go for a catch at some point. So we're going to go basically for an overfarm. Yeah, but here comes the catch. We go for the snipe and Velplume. The opponent basically, I think, is forced to let this go or forced to shield it, whatever. Um, but in either case, we're going to take it out with either an Ice Beam or, of course, a player off, or in this case, a Velplume. In those situations, that's always something to watch out for. The opponent's win con, even though they had a shield, they're not really going to be able to take care of the Azu. They have to try and sort of absorb energy somewhere. And yeah, you just go for the overfarm, especially if you're not in range for one move. It can be a little bit trickier whenever you're like almost going to get KO'd by one move. It's a little bit scarier waiting for the catch, but in that situation, that was perfectly fine. Now, interesting matchup here with Farfarn. They've done an absolute ton of damage with the power whip. I'm trying to basically win the zeros against this thing. We do get off two foul plays, which is going to force the second or the first shield off the opponent. And I'm thinking here, ah, oh, do I fight for alignment or do I fight for um, shield advantage? I decide to fight for alignment. Um, I don't really want this to get back onto my Azu at any point. And yeah, if I can realign my Azu and Reggie perfectly in the back, that's probably a good thing. In comes Dragonheart. And yeah, I think it might be this match where they go for shield. No, they go for the straight swap and it's jealous and straight RPS for the win. Let's go. This is basically good games already. Um, this might have been an opponent queuing into Great League instead of Retro Cup. Because this definitely looks like a Retro Cup team. I do think Fur is quite an interesting Pokemon, but I'm not sure if you would lead it into a meta that's probably quite dominated by um, Talonflame. I do think it probably has a decent enough time against Skarmory because you resist the Steel Wing. Uh, you have Thunder as well, which doesn't one-shot, but uh, Fur is certainly an interesting pick. And now we do get an Azumarill lead. You're going to see here that Azu versus Sableye is not absolutely terrible for Sableye especially if they allow you to get off the return before throwing the player off. They put it overformed, they're obviously interested in bringing good timing, which you've got to respect, and they're basically in 100 energy here. Now we do get some lock-ons through, and once again, you're going to see what I'm talking about, especially with a non-shadow quag. I do believe I'm probably going to get off two moves here, um, which is going to force a shield off the opponent. At this point, we can either clean it up with uh, Azu, or clean it up with our, um, our Sableye. Look to come out with a move for their Azu, and we, yet we end up getting off the sub cannon, or should I say focus blast, um, I think at this point, what I decide to do probably is come in and shield once and farm down potentially. We'll see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to go for a big stone edge here. So yeah, this is kind of getting awkward. I wanted to farm it down, but I realized that I probably couldn't at this point. So I think what I do is just get rid of this thing, come into our own Azu. And we're up a shield and in comes a jump off. This is definitely a little bit awkward for us. Um, I'm expecting the catch. I'm very cognizant of the catch. We do end up getting a free bubble here and we shield up the energy ball. Knowing that Energy Ball does a lot more damage than a, f a player off from their Azu. Their Azu is decently low because we landed the return. And that one Ice Beam does not KO. I made sure to see the second uh, Fairy Wind come through before I threw this move. A catch is very obvious in this situation. And I'm expecting the opponents to go for a Snipe. I shield this move. I'm expecting them to go for a Snipe. So I'm going to, um, yeah, of course, eat this move. What I'm expecting is the combo player from the Azu. So we swap straight out. We actually go for one and then swap. We do end up catching the move. So... I think that's another thing that you have to sort of try to do. Try to predict what your opponents are thinking. They have a ton of energy, right? They had 100 energy in Azu, and my Azu is getting quite low. As you can see, I'm not quite in player off range, and what I need to do in this situation here is farm up to 100 energy exactly. Nothing less will get the job done. We're two bubbles away. Do we get to it? We do just get to it in time. So it was a good thing that we predicted the snipe, and yeah, that's good games. We were sort of in the head of the opponent a little bit there, and uh, we were able to take it. So hopping into the next one, Deoxys, fantastic lead. The opponent swaps into Dragonair. Once again, we will uh, happily take a shield off the opponent. Sh uh, safe swapping Dragonair. It's quite interesting. Um, I guess you don't see an absolute ton of fairies, but buffed Clefable, or sorry, not buffed Clefable, buffed um, Wigglytuff will certainly be a thing. Um, Azu is a thing, so I guess you're seeing probably more Azus in the in the front instead of the back, so maybe Dragonair, generally speaking, is a pretty safe, safe swap. I think this might be the matchup I was talking about where the opponent actually starts shielding Ice Beams. Again, that's another good reason for you to uh, basically outpace and get the shield buff Sableye and then hop into your Azu. The opponent comes back into Deoxys. They actually go for an aggro swap. I do not want to throw energy here. I want to hold on to it. Just in case there is something in the back, um, I do end up catching the Thunderbolt here. I'm happy enough to shield it and basically go for a slight over farm and uh, look to get off the foul play. Probably could have over farmed a little bit more, but I'm thinking we should be able to get off a move on the Dragon Dragonheart. It's actually an Altarium, a double dragon team. Dragon's looking very, very strong this season. I think I'm going to get off one move instead of two, so we go for the return. If you can get off two moves, go for two fire plays. Um, but this is perfectly fine at this point. We come into Reggie to absorb the energy, knowing that they'll insta-throw the sky attack, trying to take out the Azu. We go for the Ice Beam, they catch on their Dragon Dragonair, and this is basically game over. They can't exactly Dragon Breath down. Double resisted uh, Dragon Breaths, not going to get it done against Azu, and they put it made a big mistake. They aggro swapped out of their Dragonair um, into their Deoxys, knowing that the switch timer was misaligned. But it was a very, very big tell that they were probably weak to Azu in the back. 
because they're shielding the dragon arrow, trying to preserve it. Definitely not the play by the opponent. Um, Registeel lead, we CMP this, or actually we go for 7 and throw, because I don't want to CMP and lock myself into this move. I think I go for a 1 and catch, I was trying to go for a 1 and catch, the opponent went for a 1 and throw, they instantly threw the zap. We can live that move, and we don't actually get the debuff. I stay in here for far too long and take a lot of Shadow Claw damage, should have went straight into Azu there. But we are 1 off the foul play, and that might come back to uh, help us a little bit later on. Um, I'm going to go straight for the uh, player off here. The opponent's on Power Gem, of course, as a Shadow, which takes 8 Shadow Claws to get to. Um, yep, these bubbles are absolutely chunking the Sableye, and at this point I realise I can just go for Ice Beam. Now at this point I'm thinking they're shielding this thing, so they might be weak to Azu in the back. So it might be an idea for me to try and preserve this, so I think I will basically farm up a little bit, shield up this move, and probably come in and go for a snipe with my own Sableye. Oh no, I actually don't, I just let it go, and I try to swap out, but I guess it's probably a good thing I don't, because I can uh, look to basically swap out of this match straight into Reggie. So I'm not going to get farmed down, which uh, probably is a good thing. In comes Altaria, in comes Reggie. We're going to outpace because we got a little bit of farm in the front end. Boom, this is going to come through. One shot the Reggie seal. And there's basically uh, nothing the Altaria could do. So yeah, as you're seeing in the back, double weak to Azu. Azu is such a good Pokemon. And uh, I'm actually quite happy with the buff this season. I've always heard the legendary tales of the rank on Azu. Um, I started playing Go Battle League. I've hit Legend now three seasons in a row. I hit Veteran the season before that. So that'll be four seasons. And I started playing probably like halfway through the season before that. So I've been playing Gobat League for about four and a half seasons, which I guess is just a little bit over a year at this point. I have heard how great Azu was back in the day, of course. Whenever I was just getting started in Gobat League, shortly after I got started, uh, Lantern got the buff, Tentacruel got Scald, um, if you guys remember back that far. Um, so I've never seen Azu at this level. Again, I've been a big fan of Azu since I built it the season before last, but uh, with, with the buff bubble, it really makes a big difference. Even in this particular matchup, being able to bubble it down is just fantastic. Now, we're playing this kind of like an ABB style. We have two answers to the Cresselia, right? So no need to let them take us out. Uh, Sableye can take care of it. Reggie can take care of it. And with Registeel, we can draw out whatever's in the back. And look to basically come back in with our Azu and take care of whatever's in the back. And then we have Sableye on the Cresselia. Now, as you guys can see, the opponent is uh, shielding up Focus Blast, which is great. They can get the farm down. We're going to get off one more move. I'm thinking they might think it's probably the hardest hitting move left. They're probably correct in that assumption. However, we've got two shields now. Um, we can come in with our Sableye. Wasn't expecting the opponent to insta throw here, so I decide to shield, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I decided to go for the return and then come into Azu because I didn't think that like two ice beams or whatever would KO. I was also thinking that um, you know with the Cresselia annoying Moonblast it could get very awkward. So I wanted to get some chip on this because one foul play does not KO this thing. I wanted to try and chip it with the Azu and basically get it into foul play range. We still have a shield, so the opponent's basically going to have to throw uh, one move here and this one Grass Knot. I think they actually might undercharge it. Yeah, they do which is quite a smart play. We get off one more move, which essentially puts it into foul play range. So the opponent will have to build up to back-to-back -back moves here. And the opponent actually top left here, which I, I don't know if it was over or not. But yeah, if they baited me once, it might have got a little bit awkward. And that's it for the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, You can see our battles here. I actually went free to at the very beginning using a different team. It was actually the Nerds Rising team, Diggersby. Um, sorry, Deoxys lead, Diggersby and Double. Went free to with it. Wasn't like a massive fan. And here I am calculating my win percentage, just about 60%. Let me know how you guys are getting on this season in the comments down below. And of course, if you did enjoy the video, subscribe, drop a like. It's all very much appreciated. Thank you very much for the support in the videos, guys, and have a fantastic rest of your day.